This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to recreate a beautiful dress that I saw on Instagram. The dress I'm going to be trying to recreate is this one here by the brand Rue Stick, I think is how it's pronounced. And this dress just has so many beautiful features, all of which I'm completely obsessed with. It has this really interesting shirred detail on the bodice of the dress as well as this really lovely ruffled hem skirt. And then what really drew me to this dress were these really adorable tie-up puffy sleeves. I just think they're really different and unlike anything I've ever tried making before. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I love a good puffy sleeve. So as soon as I saw this dress, I knew I had to have a go at trying to recreate something similar for my wardrobe. The fabric that I'm going to be making my dress out of today is this adorable 90s microfloral cotton fabric. This fabric was kindly sent to me by one of my Swedish followers. Um, her name is Karen and she got in touch asking whether or not I was interested in some of this fabric. And I'm just so excited to cut into it as I think it's going to make a really beautiful dress. And the pattern I'm going to be using to try and recreate this dress is my Rosa sewing pattern, which I'll have a link to down in the description below. Um, the dress has got a lot of different elements to it so I think ultimately I'll be making the pattern up as I go but I figured the rosa pattern will be a good base to start with. So yeah without further ado let's get into it and let's see if I can make a dress that's even half as beautiful as the Rue stick dress. So to start with, I'm going to work on the bodice of the dress and in particular, I'm going to be focusing on that really beautiful shirt detail on the front. I actually figured it would be easiest to pre-share some fabric and then cut the bodice front out of it. So to create the pre-shared fabric, I start by taking the front bodice piece of the rosa pattern and place it down onto my fabric and then cut a length of fabric that is a good 10 to 15 centimeters longer than the actual pattern piece. It's also important to make sure that the fabric is at least double the width of the pattern piece as well. As you can hopefully see, the sharing on the dress has been spaced out in a kind of pattern and I'm going to try and replicate something similar for my dress by spacing out my rows of sharing with the following measurements. To make this part easier, I decided I would simply just draw the lines out straight onto my fabric with a water erasable pen and that way I'll be able to keep the rows of sharing nice and straight and consistent as I sew. Doing this did take a lot of time but it definitely made the whole process so much easier. I'm not sure if it's picking up on camera, but my fabric now has a whole heap of pen lines on it that I can start sharing over and create that really beautiful shared pattern on the fabric. If you're new to sharing, I'll leave a link to a video down below that I go into detail on how to get started with sharing. But basically I start by hand winding some sharing elastic onto my bobbin. And then I place it into my sewing machine as I would normally. You do have to change the settings of your sewing machine a little bit when sharing. For me, I find that changing the tension to 6 when it's usually 4 and the stitch length to 3.5 when it's usually 2.5 works best for my machine. I then just start sewing along the lines I pre-drew onto the fabric and the sharing elastic should start to gather up the fabric nicely. I just keep sewing along each line and with every row of sharing I do, the stretchier the fabric becomes. Music 
And as you can hopefully see, the spacing of the sharing creates a really beautiful pattern in the fabric. And my shared fabric is coming together nicely. Once you've shared along all of the lines, you should have a pretty tightly gathered piece of fabric like this. A handy trick I always like to do when sharing is to use the steam of my iron to shrink the sharing elastic even further. While I'm at it, I also give all of the gathering and the sharing elastic a good press with my iron. Next, I take the bodice front and back of my rosa pattern and I fold up the front pattern piece by about 5 centimeters or 2 inches and I fold up the back bodice piece by about 2.5 centimeters or an inch. This will just shorten the bodice slightly to look a bit more similar to the dress I'm trying to recreate. Then folding my pre-shared fabric in half, I place the front bodice on the fold and then pin it in place. I decided to have a bit of an experiment and cut the sharing to see if the gathers and the elastic would stay intact and I'm happy to report that it was absolutely fine. So I decided to go ahead and cut the front bodice piece out of the shared fabric. So as you can see, the bodice is nicely cut out and all of the sharing and the elastic are still intact and haven't come undone, which is good because I wasn't sure if this was going to work. Now that the front bodice is all cut out, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and run your business. Whether you'd like to create a portfolio to showcase your work, start making or selling your own products, or simply want to build any website of any kind, Squarespace have so many beautifully designed templates to choose from, you're sure to find one that's perfect for you and your needs. Once you've selected a template, you can customize it completely to suit your brand and personal style. So this means everything from the complete layout of the website to all the fun things like the fonts and colors to really be able to create a website that is exactly what you want and unlike any other website out there. As I'm sure you're aware by now, I'm a huge fan of Squarespace and have personally been using them to run the Rosary Apparel website and online store for the last five or six years. And something I really love about Squarespace is how easy they make it to add new things to your website. I'm constantly adding new things to my site, whether it be a new video or a new product. And the drag and drop navigation is so user friendly and I can quickly add new content to my website with just a few clicks. So if you'd like to create a beautiful online presence of your own, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for being such an amazing supporter of this channel. Like the original dress, I'm going to keep the bodice back plain and non-shirt, so I'm therefore going to cut out the bodice back and the front and back facing pieces, as well as the pocket piece of my rosa pattern out in my fabric. Then taking the bodice back template, I mark out the darts onto the back of my fabric with my water erasable pen. Due to the stretchiness that the sharing creates on the front bodice, I'm going to skip the front darts entirely. I then pin the back darts in place and then stitch them from the point of the dart without back stitching to create a kind of triangle shape. Once the darts are stitched, I tie the loose threads into a double knot. I then press the darts towards where the center of the dress will be. Next, with right sides together, I place the bodice backs onto the bodice front and pin and stitch them together along the shoulder seam. Once stitched, I overlock the raw edges to prevent them from fraying. 
If you don't have an overlocker, you can use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine for this part instead. And my bodice is looking a little something like this. Next, with right sides together, I place the back facing pieces onto the front facing piece and pin and stitch them together along the shoulder seams. I then overlock or zigzag stitch the curved edge. Next, I fold and press the curved edge in by about one centimeter or half an inch and then stitch the folded edge in place. Then with right sides together, I place the facing onto the bodice and match the shoulder seams together. I then pin and stitch the facing in place like this. Once stitched, I tuck the facing onto the inside of the dress and then press it in place. And the neck edge of my bodice is now nicely enclosed on the inside of the dress like this. Again, with right sides together, I flip the bodice backs back onto the bodice front and stitch them together along the side seams. And my bodice is very nearly complete. Now all that's left to do is attach the sleeves. I've actually shared the making process as well as a free pattern for these sleeves in another video. And I'll have a link to that video down in the description below if you'd like to go check it out. But once the sleeves are made, simply gather up the gathering stitches at the shoulder to create a little bit of extra puffiness in the sleeve and to also be able to ease them nicely into the armhole of the bodice. Then with right sides together, pin the sleeves to the bodice, matching the underarm seams together. Then stitch the sleeves in place. And the amazing shirred puffy sleeved bodice is complete. I just cannot get over how good the sharing looks with those puffy sleeves. I love it so much and therefore just had to try it on straight away. And once I did, I was so tempted to leave it as a blouse. I just think it looks so great with the skirt I was wearing that day. So yeah, a blouse version definitely needs to happen. So now that the bodice is complete, it's time to start focusing on the skirt of the dress. To figure out the amount of fabric I needed for the skirt, as well as the ruffled hem, I used the following formula. So for my skirt, I used the following measurements. Once you've figured out the measurements of your skirt, it's time to cut them out in your fabric. Start by taking the pocket pieces we cut earlier and overlock or zigzag stitch along the curved edge to prevent them from fraying. Then with right sides together, place them along the sides of your main skirt pieces, approximately 10 centimeters or four inches from the top edge. Then stitch them in place and again, overlock or zigzag stitch the raw edges. Next, I press the pockets out with my iron. And then again, with right sides together, I place the skirt backs onto the skirt fronts, matching the pocket seams together. I then stitch them together along the sides, remembering to stitch around the pocket. Now 
Next, I take the fabric that I cut out for the ruffled hem and stitch all the panels together. I then change the stitch length of my sewing machine to the longest possible setting. I then sew two rows of gathering stitches along the entire top edge of the ruffled hem. Next, pull gently on the top threads of the gathering stitches to gather up the fabric of the ruffled hem until it's approximately the same size as the bottom edge of the skirt. Then with right sides together, pin the ruffled hem to the skirt. Then stitch the ruffled hem in place. Give the gathers a good press with your iron and your skirt should now have a beautiful ruffled hem like this. Then again setting your sewing machine to the longest possible stitch, sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of the skirt. Then gather up the skirt until it's the same size as the bottom edge of the bodice. With right sides together, pin the skirt to the bodice. And then stitch it in place. Now all that's left to do is insert an invisible zip into the back of the dress. And then hem the entire bottom edge of the ruffled hem. Optionally, you can hand stitch the neck edge facing onto the inside of the dress, but I just top stitched along the neck edge to keep the facing in place. And then finally, I removed all of the water erasable pen lines on the front of the dress with some water. And my beautiful ultimate cottage core tie up puff sleeve dress is complete. So, how does it look on and how does it compare to the original rustic dress? So I hope you enjoyed following along as I attempt to recreate this dress. I had so much fun trying to figure out how to put this dress together and I think that all the different elements of this dress work so nicely together. My Instagram explore page at the moment is just filled with so many beautiful pieces and I'm just constantly inspired by them and want to make them for my own wardrobe. Um, I think the algorithm knows me a little bit too well. <laughs> but yeah, let me know if you enjoy these types of videos. I've got quite a few on my channel already. So I'll leave the entire playlist down below so you can go check all of those out. And if you have a go at making a dress similar to this one or simply just use some of the elements of it, like the sleeves or the sharing details, then I would love to see your makes. So be sure to tag me at Rosary Apparel when you share your photos on Instagram. And if you did enjoy the video, it would mean so much to me if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching!